Hello everyone and welcome. So now that you've installed Omniverse, I just wanted to give you a quick walkthrough of the different components and where to find them and uh, just what to expect from the Omniverse here. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started with the system monitor. On the bottom right of your screen, you should now see in your system tray a new icon that's called the Omniverse System Monitor. If you stop and let it show, it'll actually say Omniverse System Monitor. And if you right click on it, you'll see a whole bunch of services that are running. This is kind of your control panel for your Nucleus server, and it's running all the Nucleus server services. So these are different things that happen in the background uh, as you're using the Omniverse, and it allows you to stop and start those services. Uh, should you choose you don't want them to be running, you can stop them, or if you need to restart them, you can stop them and then start it back up again. Okay, so that's kind of how you would restart. Um, and that is true for all the different pieces of the Omniverse Nucleus. Now, um, the one that I would like to bring your attention to is the cache, because this actually has some settings to it. So I'm going to go into the settings. And as you can see here, it's showing us, well, for me, I don't actually have any, I just reinstalled, so I have no bytes and no files. But as I start to connect to different assets in my Omniverse, this is gonna start caching things. And what it'll do is it basically creates a copy locally so that you can access it much more quickly when opening new files and you don't always have to deal with uh, server interaction. So it, it will increase your speed, but depending on how many servers you're connecting to and you know all the different things that you might be doing with this, this, this can grow. And it might get to a point where it's starting to overwhelm your hard drive. If that's the case, you can clear the cache and that will just uh, make it a little slower to load at first and we'll get rid of all the old data and make it clear. You can also turn it off by disabling it if you would like to do that. I don't really see any reason why you would want to though. Um, and you can also create a list here. So if you do comma and then you can just type in your server name. Okay, so you could type in whatever server names you want. Star says do them all. So it's just gonna cache any server that you try to connect to, including your own, okay? So that's uh, just something I wanted to point out because it is a little different. And as you start to work with the Omniverse, it'll be kind of important for you to know about this, all right? So uh, that's your cache service, okay? And um, there are some other services in here. I'm not gonna get into them too deeply. Just know this is how you start and stop services in case they stop running for some reason, okay? So that's the first bit. The next critical component on our list is gonna be the Omniverse web. Omniverse Web grants us easy access to all of our files and folders through a nice, easy-to-use web interface. To get to the Omniverse Web, simply type localhost colon 8080 in your web browser, and you should come to a page very similar to this. On first launch, Omniverse Web will bring you to this page and will autofill with admin. You can go ahead and put in whatever username you would like. So for this case, I'm going to go ahead and use Paul, and I can go ahead and then sign in. Wonderful. Now that I'm signed in, you'll see that we have this users folder and that Paul was created and is now a folder that I can start populating. And for every user created, they will get a folder very similar to this that they can populate and deal with in their own way. Omniverse Web also grants capabilities to grant permissions, view file details, download and share the URL, create snapshots, which is effectively a backup utility, and a great many other things. Without going into too much detail, just be aware that Omniverse Web grants easy management of all your files within the Omniverse Nucleus. The next tool on our list is going to be Omniverse Drive, so let's go ahead and get that open now. Okay, upon launching Omniverse Drive, you're going to come to another login window very similar to the one before, except now we have this option to join a specific local host. So we'll check that out in a second. But first, let's go ahead and put our username in. So I'm going to use Paul like I did before. And now I can go ahead and connect to my local host. Local host 3009 is going to be the local host for your Omniverse Nucleus server. So whenever you're confronted by this type of login, be aware that localhost colon 3009 is the address to to your Omniverse Nucleus. Okay, so now we can go ahead and sign in. And here we get the opportunity to choose a drive letter that we would like our Omniverse drive to connect to. So let's go ahead and hit OK. Now, 
As you may have noticed, nothing really happened, but in actuality, something did happen. Okay, so let's go ahead and open up our uh, browser. And if we look at my PC, you will see that we now have a new drive called Omniverse Drive, and it is set to localhost 3009, and it's set to the drive letter O like we asked. So this gives us easy access, just like before, to the same files and folders that Omniverse Web did. The only difference is now it mounts as a drive on your computer and gives you the opportunity to use other tools to directly inject files into the Omniverse without having to go through a web interface. Next on the list is Kit. Kit is the main tool that you're going to be using to interact with your data on the Omniverse. This is the tool that we provide that gives you real-time ray tracing, real-time path tracing as seen in this image, which does incredibly beautiful renderings. Uh, it also marries to a fully featured uh, file browser and file management, as well as scene navigation, details, and information about the assets that you load. So where Omniverse Web is kind of like your interface for the files as they exist and users, this is the primary tool you're gonna to use to edit and manage the actual data that you send to the Omniverse. So when you send a USD file, this is where you're gonna to wanna to open it and check it and work with it. The features are far too numerous to uh, name right now, but just know that this is gonna be your primary interface tool. The next piece of this puzzle is going to be the DCC tools. As I was mentioning earlier, Kit is kind of a review tool. It's not really a content creation tool. Though it has creation capabilities, it's not generally where you're going to be creating your content from. Instead, you're going to be using things like Maya or 3ds Max, and you're going to be sending data from those tools. So I just wanted to give you a quick review of what to expect when you launch your DCC tools if you decided to install the Omniverse plugin into those DCC tools. So for now, we have Maya and Max. So under Maya, if you go under the Omniverse panel, you'll have the ability to do all the different things that you need to do with your DCC tool to integrate into your Omniverse. So exporting will send to your Omniverse and then you can open up those files inside of Kit. So this is primarily the way you're gonna be sending your data. You can also open data uh, from the Omniverse through these toolkits. So just be aware that as you install the plugins to the different DCC tools, you will likely have a panel similar to this. Maya has their panel here, and just to show you, 3ds Max also has a panel very similar, and it does more or less the same things, sending and receiving files from your Omniverse nucleus. And this is how you're gonna do your primary content creation and content editing. Okay, so you're gonna be doing it that through your DCC tools of choice. Okay, so that more or less covers the major components of the Omniverse. So as you may have noticed, most of the details in this video have been pretty light. We haven't gone into too much depth on pretty much anything. And it was really just to give you an overview. But before we conclude, I want to teach you how to start fishing yourself. Okay, so the last major component is gonna be the Omniverse docs. So if we hit the start button and type in Omniverse docs, you'll be able to launch the local version of the documentation which is current to your current version. Okay, so every time you reinstall, you'll get the new latest documentation with that installation. This makes it very easy to use and it also makes it very fast as you're navigating locally on your hard drive. Okay, great. So what you can find in here is pretty much everything that you would need to know. Um, anything on Omniverse Kit is found in the Omniverse Kit section. If you wanna know more about how server interactions work, you can go into the Omniverse Nucleus. Under Connect, we have all the different connection tools such as Maya, 3ds Max, UE4, all the things that plug into our Omniverse Nucleus. There are many, many more things that are coming, but as we expand, this documentation will really take you far. And we've done our best to include uh, instructional videos for just about everything that is difficult. So you should find just a great wealth of information all throughout this documentation. 
Okay, so that's going to conclude this post-installation video, and I do hope you found it useful. But I do suggest that you go through the documentation and start looking in the area that is most applicable to yourself. Alright, thank you very much, and I hope to see you in future tutorials.